Okay, we'll get it underway here. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I had a chance to recap um, the game against Iowa the other day. You know, I thought that our uh, – the one thing I will say on that is I thought our toughness was really good. I thought we've done a great job with that lately. I didn't think we played real smart. thought we had too many um, mistakes, uh, really, at, at, at both ends of the floor. But I, I think we've really – you know, start to play with the, the toughness that you need to play with this time of year. We need to execute a little bit better, make fewer mistakes. Um, you know, this has been an interesting week for us because we've had three games in six days. And uh, so we've tried to manage their bodies and minds the best we can. You know, we didn't do a whole lot yesterday because I thought we played extremely hard uh, in, in, in Iowa City. Uh, so yesterday was a big mental day. Um, obviously, we started to dive into Northwestern, who's playing really well. Uh, right now, they're shooting the ball really well. You know, they've made around 43s in their last four games. Um, different guys are doing it. Um, they've got uh, some young guys that have really uh, stepped up and played well for, for them. It reminds me a little bit of last year, how some of our freshmen at that time looked in February versus January. And uh, they've clearly gotten better. Um, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now uh, on both ends of the floor, but especially offensively. I think they're really in sync. Um, and a lot of people are talking certainly about their young guys, and rightly so. But I do think Demps has really uh, been a big part of it as, as well uh, as Ola. You know, both those guys in conjunction with uh, their younger guys uh, have played really well. You know, Ola's numbers are up. Um, you know, Demps made uh, big plays uh, when they beat Indiana the other night. They went on a run that kind of got them some distance, and, you know, he had not, not all nine of them, you know, on that run. So he's a very explosive scorer. You know, we'll have our hands full tomorrow. Um, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge. And, um, you know, today we got to have a good practice and then obviously finish up our preparation for tomorrow night's game. Questions? No question about it, Matt, uh, watching them, as I said. I think they've really gotten better. They've really improved. They've stayed the course. Uh, they've done a great job. You know, they, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. You know, they're really clicking offensively uh, with shot making and execution. And, and uh, you can tell just from watching them that they're having fun playing together, playing the game the right way. Uh, you know, certainly that's what I see on film. Uh, Jalen's better. Practiced yesterday, although we didn't do a whole lot physically. Um, fever's down and uh, manageable. We got some of his weight back on him, and um, you know I anticipate him, you know, being able to go tomorrow. No, just you know I wasn't feeling well. It was a lot of stuff going around, and he had a high fever. And our most important thing was to get that fever down and to get his weight back up because uh, he had lost uh, quite a bit of weight there. But now he's back to you know where he was prior. Yeah, I just didn't think they practiced very well. They got to play better, you know, and, and uh, it was a good lesson for some of those guys, you know, some of the guys that turned the ball over in practice uh, at the higher uh, rates were the same guys that did it in the game. Um, you know, the same guys that I didn't think were really locked in and in practice, um, you know, to the level of some of the other guys were the same guys that struggled a little bit in the game, you know, got to play better. Yeah, and it just so happened. It doesn't happen that way all the time, but – you know, the two or three guys that were really locked in in practice and had energy and were ready to go played pretty well in the game, you know. So that was the point I was trying to make uh, to our team and, you know, a, a good lesson, you know, for some of those guys to learn. Throughout the season, um, Laron has, has, you know, has committed a couple harder fouls, including in Iowa, the one in the last game against Iowa. How do you kind of find that balance where you still want to be obviously playing aggressive but still control himself? Yeah, he needs to find that balance for sure. You know, fouling is a mistake. I tell him that all the time, with rare exception. You know, if you're trying to stop the clock late or prevent a guy from getting a layup, uh, you know, maybe something of that nature. But 90-plus percent of the time, it's a mistake, you know, and, and we've got to learn. I love – you're exactly right. I love Leron's aggressiveness, uh, and he's got to figure out a way, not just him but our team, you know, We've done a pretty good job of defensive free throw rate all year, but in the last couple games we've not been, you know, great uh, with that. We've got to be better uh, and get back to being that team that plays really hard without fouling. Up and down, you know, typical though. I mean, I, I think um, 
you know, LaRon's had some uh, very good moments and made some big plays for us. And then there's some other things he's trying to learn and, and figure out. Well, the, you got to read it, Rob. I mean, you know, it, it's one of those deals where it's not. So I was telling the staff this morning, you know, it's not chess where you can just put your piece here, here, here. It's a little bit like life. You know, the game's very dynamic. If you drive the ball and a shot blocker comes, pass. If you drive the ball and he doesn't come, lay it in or dunk it. You know, if you got an angle, you know, attack with that angle. The guy has you squared up, pass it. You know, you got to have some instincts involved in this. Um, I thought the other day that, uh, I'll be honest, I thought the ball moved better than it did certainly here at home against Michigan State. I thought we had some decent looks with some of those guys that we just didn't make. Um, and we've got to just, you know, step up and make a few more plays. It's three games in a row for Kendrick Gray hasn't shot as well. What, what do you think the reason is on it? Just got to play better. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, people try to – it's a different game than it was when I first started with clips and synergy. And, you know, I just watched a bunch of them this morning. I mean, I get percentages on individual tendencies, personnel tendencies, team tendencies. I mean, I've got more information than you could shake a stick at. I mean, the game's changed in that regard from when I first started, Jeremy. It's a totally different deal. You know, the amount of film we have access to, the amount of edits we can put together, the – you know, and there's good coaches in this league and good players, and everybody's trying to take away each other's strengths. Seems like Ray's doing kind of what he wanted him to do. Seems like he's playing team games. Just how yeah, Ray's playing better. He practiced well last week. I thought he did some good things. We'd like for those guys to be a little bit more efficient, uh, and we're working on that. Um, but I think he certainly made a lot of progress. Jeremy, from when he first came back until now, you know, I think that's been significant. Yeah, it's not necessarily that he has to do something to get back in the starting lineup. He's playing, you know, really well. I think people make too much about who starts and who doesn't start to begin with. You know, a lot of times it's, you know, for us it's rotations. It's, you know, uh, who plays with who based on, you know, what we think our best combinations are for a game, the style of play of the game, um, you know, who's going to finish the game for us, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm not, you know, not that worried about, about that. Obviously, I don't know how many minutes per game he's played. I don't have that stat sheet in front of me, but it's been quite a few. No, Ken, Kendrick's a tough kid uh, mentally and just kind of plays what's in front of him. It's one of the things I like about Kendrick. And, um, you know, that's kind of what, he, what, what he's doing. I'm, I'm, you know, for me with him, you know, continuing to emphasize defending, taking a little bit better care of the basketball. Uh, but I'm not that worried about the shots. He's a good shooter. I want him aggressive. And uh, I've got a lot of confidence that he'll make them. John, were you happy with Malcolm's shots the other night? Yeah, I was. Obviously, you'd like to see a few more of them go in. Um, but I thought overall he was good. I thought he had a couple hard drives uh, where there was some contact that didn't work out for us. But you know, I, I thought that uh, I thought he had some good looks and just didn't make them. Um, the biggest thing with him is just consistency on the defensive end. You know, I'm more concerned about that because I know he's really talented, and um, you know, if he gets good shots, he's going to make a lot of them. Anything from the phone lines here for Coach? Hey, John. It's David Mercer from AP. Hey, um, David. It, it, talking about all the, the shooting problems, um, back at the beginning of the year, you said you were pretty confident that this bunch would be a lot different than last year in its, in its struggles. To what extent are you surprised to sort of find yourself in the same place at this point in the year? Well, I don't think we're in the same place, uh, David, at all. Uh, I do think certainly having to – you know, coach several different teams throughout the course of the year, change style of play, adapt, adjust uh, offensively and defensively. Um, you know, certainly that affects rhythm a little bit and continuity and, and uh, growth to some extent. Um, but, 
you know, at the end of the day, we've got to figure it out. I've said that from the beginning. Um, and we've got, uh, we've got to execute a little bit better than what we're doing right now, make a little bit fewer mistakes. Um, but in terms of our shots, you know, I, I think those, you know, right now I'm not, I don't have any issues with our, with our shots the other night against Iowa. Um, I thought that we moved the ball better and, you know, we just didn't, didn't, make, it, didn't make enough of them. Thanks. Sure. Um, you know, it's great to have some depth, you know, obviously there for a while we were playing those guys a, a longer, longer stretches, you know, they were playing a ton of minutes. Um, so I think that part has helped us for sure. I think obviously he helps our rebounding. I think he helps us defensively with giving us a lockdown guy, uh, on, on the perimeter. Um, so I think all those things have certainly, you know, helped our team and, you know, now we've just we've got to figure out a way to, you know, continue to work our synchronization on offense. I think that's gotten better for sure. The other night, I felt like we just didn't make enough shots. You know, the Michigan State game, I thought the ball stuck. You know, it was too sticky. So I, I thought we improved uh, from the, uh, from Michigan State to Iowa. Um, but I, I think certainly it's it's great to have him, you know, back out there because he's he's one of those guys that just. He doesn't affect the game just on the offensive end. He can affect it rebounding. He can affect it defending. He can, you know, he gets his hands on a lot of balls. Like he just, he has an ability to affect the game in all three areas, defending, rebounding, and offense. You know, so anytime you can add a guy like that back to your rotation, you know, at the end of the day, once we get synchronized, it's a benefit. Yeah, Jalen didn't play the other night because he was out. Uh, yeah, sometimes we'll play Stark some at the two. You guys have seen us do that. We've done that less since Ray's been back. Uh, but Starks did a great job uh, in, in, in that role during that time. Um, you know, you typically don't play that small, but we, we did, and I thought our guys did a good job with that, adapting and adjusting. That's what we needed at that time. But Ray really can play any of the three positions. I mean, he can play one, two, or three uh, in our system. Uh, I've got a feel for what combinations play best together. Obviously, when you're in foul trouble like we were the, the other night, sometimes that gets thrown out the window. And then some of it's based on the team you're playing um, and what you see and what they're doing defensively and who you think might be best in there at the time. So it's not necessarily a rote uh, deal. You know, we have a an idea, but most games, I'll be honest with you, Rob, because the game ball is like life, you get thrown pitches and you've got to adjust during the game on the fly. You got to try to manage the game the best that you can, whether it's foul trouble, whether it's you know the personnel they have on the floor, whether it's what you need at the time. Do you need more of an offensive lineup? Do you need more of a defensive lineup? Are they small? Are they big? Like there's a lot of there's a lot of factors and variables when it comes to that. Under what circumstances do you, would you play Ray at the one, Joe? Uh, like the other night that we did the other night. Yeah, we had to play him there because Jalen was out. So. You know, fortunately for us, Ray's played the position in the past, and um, you know he hadn't played it at all this year uh, until the other night, and, and didn't get a, have to play it a whole lot because we left Starks out there for a very long period of time. Um, but he's always prepared to do that if we need him to do that. Top. Final question. Thanks, guys.